Today, we will be discussing another truly intriguing yet overlooked empire. There have been many civilizations and kingdoms that have been dubbed as religiously diverse, the crossroads of the world, or the center of trade. But as a kingdom that spanned the regions of India, Bactria, Persia, and China, that name may be most suitable to describe the Kushan Empire. In my very first video about the Greco-Bactrians over one month ago, I mentioned how the nomadic Yuzi tribe invaded the weakened Greco-Bactrians and ultimately caused their fall. These Yuzi people settled in Bactrian cities and began learning about the culture of the Greco-Bactrians. The Yuzi would later become known as the Kushans. The first Kushan king, Haraios, is known to have been more influenced by the Greeks, exhibiting an Hellenistic name and style of coinage. The Kushans first expanded from Bactria down to a region known as Gandhara. This led to the more popular usage of the Karosti language, which was common in Gandhara. The Kushans continued their quest southward toward the Indian subcontinent. As with all major empires, their rapid expansion began with a single king. In the case of the Kushans, his name was Kajula Kadfises. His successor Vima Taktu was the one who eventually breached the subcontinent and opened the door to the diversity that would be assimilated into the empire. The Kushan Empire's zenith was achieved under the reign of the king Kanishka. From the dry, desert-like steppes of Central Asia, he pushed the empire into the subtropical heartland of the Indian subcontinent, and focused on building forts and monuments there, many of which survived till the modern day. In the process, the Kushans received a growing influence from Hindu traditions. However, Kanishka was an avid patron of Buddhism, and so he was greatly involved in the transmission of Buddhism throughout Central and East Asia. Under his empire, the Kushans became the rulers of the Silk Road, through which merchants from across the world passed through. Goods from Rome, China, India, and even Ethiopia were to be found in the markets of the Kushan Empire. Not only goods, but religions as well. Buddhism flourished throughout Kanishka's promotion and Silk Road merchants. It was likely from the Kushan Empire that introduced Buddhism to East Asia, where it today has a huge influence. Iranian Zoroastrianism also found itself in the realms of the Kushans. Greek and Hindu traditions were also a backbone of Kushan religion. Greek, which was once the most widely spoken language, was phased out and replaced by Bactrian, but they retained the Greek script in this language. After the rule of Kanishka, his immediate successors were faced with the Sasanian invasion. The Sasanians that invaded established a kingdom known as the Indo-Sasanians, or the Kushan Shahs, to show that this area was a distinct part of the empire. It in some ways functioned as a tributary state of the Sasanians. The last of the Kushans were scattered throughout the Indian subcontinent after much of their Central Asian territories were conquered by the Sasanians, while the bulk of their Indian territories were conquered by the Gupta Empire. These small surviving Kushan pockets were wiped out by the Gupta Empire and the Kedarite nomads invading from the north. The Kedarites also ousted the Indo-Sasanians from the region. The Indo-Sasanians, however, regained power in the region for a shorter time after allying with Turkic nomads to destroy the Heptolite and Kedarite presence in Central Asia. Their eventual demise came in the form of Arab invaders. Now for some predicting on what would happen if the Kushan Empire survived till more recently. For this, they would have to defeat the Sasanians in battle, which is no easy feat. They would have to retrieve a large amount of cavalry in addition to elephants and chariots from the Indian subcontinent. Even so, it is likely the Sasanians would gain some land, but not be able to advance into the Kushan heartland. The threat of the Kedarite and Heptolite invasions that weakened the Indo-Sasanians would reveal itself later. Northern, more sparse regions of the empire would be taken, and they would encroach closer to the main cities. During this period of extended life, the Kushan Empire's religious diversity would thrive, and they would accept the Iranic religion, Manichaeism, and later Nestorian Christianity into their society. They would continue to get a large amount of revenue and dominance from the Silk Road. The rise of the Gupta Empire would result in subsequent losses in much of the South Asian territory, but they would be able to survive longer further inland, retaining much of their culture. But this multicultural and thriving society would inevitably collapse with the extreme might of the Arabs. If they were to be revived after the Arabs receded, they would restore past religions and now add Islam to the mix. So, if there were a modern country that covered a similar area, it would be a diverse and trade-dominated and partially nomadic society that writes in a Greek script. The Kushans were undoubtedly a more obscure civilization, but just as surely a more interesting one. Their rise from plundering nomads to a consolidated and diverse empire was remarkable, and so too was their legacy, surviving long after its fall in the form of the Indo-Sasanians. As always, leave any suggestions or questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and consider subscribing to be notified when I release my next video.